Can a man of God truly become a monster, or was he a victim of his own mind? The year was 1810. The town of Magalang Pampanga was a peaceful place, but beneath this tranquility, a dark shadow was about to cast its terror. One by one, bodies surfaced. Fear gripped the hearts of Spaniards and Filipinos alike. The terror was faceless, nameless, and the Guardia Civil were left clueless. Enter Father Juan Severino Mallari, the first Filipino to preside over the parish of Pampanga. A master of calligraphy, his hands crafted beautiful art. But could these same hands be responsible for such heinous acts? It's hard to imagine, isn't it? A man of faith, an artist, a trusted figure, as a killer. But what drives a man to commit such acts? For Father Malari, it was love, a love for his mother, whom he believed was bewitched. In his desperation, Father Malari believed that by taking lives, he could save his mother. A twisted logic, fueled by superstitions and a battle within his own mind. But was Father Malari truly evil? Or was he a victim of his own psychosis? In a time when mental health was misunderstood, Father Malari's cries for help went unnoticed. The truth unraveled in the most unexpected way, a stash of bloodied items. The evidence was damning. Father Malari's fate was sealed, but the aftermath of the case left a community divided and a nation in shock. Was Father Malari a cold-blooded killer, or was he an ill, confused son? The case of Father Juan Severino Mallari remains one of history's most tragic tales. In the end, the lines between good and evil, right and wrong, are often blurred. But one thing is certain, stories like these remind us of the complexities of the human mind and the tragedies that can unfold when it's misunderstood.